Welcome to this uh, last session of the new features of Mahada 20.10. And I'm really excited to have you all joining in this morning or this evening. And over the next half an hour, 40 minutes roughly, I'll take you through some of the highlights of this latest release of Mahara, the open source ePortfolio platform. And then we'll have um, a good amount of time until the top of the hour for any questions or comments that you may, ha may have. The features that I'm going to focus on today are really those features that you can see directly on the screen. Um, rather than looking into very um, uh, or into code changes and the like. Um, and besides the highlights that I'm going to point out today, there are of course lots of other features in Mahara 20.10 as well that you can explore on your own. But before we can take a look at any of those features, we of course need to acknowledge all the people who have been working on those features. And so I'd very much like to say thank you to the development team, to our graphic designer who had been doing amazing work this time, like all the times, but this time she had most changes in the platform actually. Um, business analysis support, accessibility support, system administrator support, and of course also the organizations that have been contributing features, that have funded features, um, uh, or also funded bug fixes in order to allow us to bring out the release with all the features that we have available here. And so thank you very much to everybody who has been involved and one group of people that I haven't yet mentioned is actually our translators. So massive thanks also to them um, because they are always keeping Mahara up to date with translations for their own languages. So it's fantastic to see Mahara used around the world and not just in English but also in other languages. So what is new? Well, a lot of different things. And one thing I'd like to start with is our new theme. Um, but before I do that, just a quick tip. If you haven't used Big Blue Button yet and the video shows up really large, um, you can drag it from the bottom and uh, make it smaller. Or you can also click the full screen button um, or icon on the right hand side next to the screen sharing and um, have go into full screen mode. So we have a new theme. Mahara comes with a number of built-in themes, raw, the very easiest and least customized, the default, um, modern, ocean and primary school. And now we have a sixth theme, which is maroon. And as you can see here, it comes with slanting in the header and the dashboard boxes and then also in the footer. And so Yvonne, our the graphic designer, she really wanted to flex her theming CSS muscles and see what she can make happen, how far she can take the Mahara theming. And so came up with this um, different theme to also give it a different mood and make it possible for people to work with it. And so like any other theme, you can actually use this maroon theme now as basis and apply your own colors um, when you work with the sub theme starter. So that is a um, kind of pared down, very simple way of um, using an existing built in theme from Mahara or also a custom theme and make some changes in particular, just color changes or font changes, and then come up with your own theme very quickly. Um, and that then also helps staying um, on top of all the changes that we are making because you only need to change your color values and the rest will come when we make changes to the built in themes. Besides the theming, um, Yvonne also took a really, really big look at our accessibility so that we are getting closer to being WCAT 2.1 conformant. 
So throughout this release, we had done quite a bit of investigation, reviewing the standards, seeing what is possible already in Mahara, what do we already support, and what are areas that we do need to put onto our roadmap in order to become conformant with the AA level for that newer standard. And so one of the things that we definitely wanted to finally iron out was our heading levels. Um, and now everything is structured correctly that we have headings one, two, and three used throughout Mahara on the infrastructure level. And then headings four, five, and six are available for people to use in their own portfolios. I can show you that very shortly when I'm going to take a look at another new feature. Um, so heading levels have been corrected. They are consistent now. Um, and another big change was that um, we got rid of all the more fixed heights of fonts and everything is now uh, declared in REM. Therefore making it really possible to um, zoom in and out of um, in your browser window and therefore use all those accessibility tools that are available to people who are hard of seeing or who um, just want to display things larger. In general, we've also increased our base font size um, for Mahara, making everything look a little bit bigger and also the width of um, the, oh, the width of the space that you have available to create your page. You can't really see those last two things well on my screen because I am already zooming in um, so that the, that the screen sharing is just larger in general on your screen. So lots of accessibility changes, but there are also still more to come over the next few releases in order to support and stay up to date with any changes that um, are being made. So on this demonstration today, uh, I am going to work with the maroon theme for Paula, our student, so that you can just get a feel of what that theme looks like. So the next um, thing that I want to show you kind of starts us off with that uh, with the assessment features because for Mahara 20.10 looking at the the biggest features that we have implemented um, we are really looking into assessment improvements and also improvements for integrating Mahara with learning management systems in particular Moodle and Totara. So let's take a look at some of those assessment features to start us off with. So when you set up a template for students, for example, um, then students can copy that template. You can have page instructions in here. And um, because it's a portfolio that ends up in their account, suddenly they can change all the things. So what we've done in Mahara uh, 20.10 is to create a template um, possibility so that now in the page settings you can declare a page as a template and then instructions will be locked. So in this case um, Paula had copied this template portfolio from her institution and now nope that was not this template that I wanted Sorry about that. That was the wrong um, portfolio to choose. And so here you can see now, in, in this case, I had actually applied a skin to the maroon theme in my header. And you can see that the slanting is also carried through um, the background image. But let's take a look at the template. So in the settings of a page, when I've copied a template, I cannot make changes to the instructions. And also, the original template is linked so that if I do need to grab it again, I have easy access to it, I can find it very quickly. Um, if a template is deleted, then it'll 
say that it's been deleted, but we still have that connection and can and don't have to remember, oh, did I copy that from a template or did I set that up on my own? Uh, but it is right there. And um, the instructions also stay locked um, if you use the peer assessment block, which can have instructions as well. Now, oftentimes we kind of do want to, or we want to encourage students to work with templates for assessment purposes, but then also be able to use some of those artifacts that they have created in other templates. And so when you make a copy of the copy, so if um, Paula now copied this portfolio from her own account, then it would be decoupled from the template, allowing her more flexibility in um, removing the instructions, for example, if she really only wants to work um, with a text box and not having to manually copy and paste the content. So instructions on um, peer assessment blocks are fine, but the two blocks that are most widely used in Mahara are actually images and also images. And so working with a client of ours, um, they had the idea that yes, we are using mainly text blocks for our portfolio. Um, and therefore we want to be able to also have instructions on our text blocks. So that is now possible that you can have instructions on a text block and um, therefore be more specific what you want students to do. And you don't have to actually write the instructions into the block content and then students overwrite it, but they can sit separately. And these instructions are also seen by people who go to the portfolio and view it. And so kind of taking a look at that accessibility feature of the heading levels that I talked about is if I now want to include a heading one, then I can say this is a heading, but looking at the actual HTML code, it shows as heading four, so that it still works with the structure that we have that we do not double up on headings one by being a page heading and also content heading. If your students already wrote text, um, then we are not changing their headings levels at this point. Um, that would be something that um, they would need to do on their own. Um, it is really for new text that they can only select these three heading levels and not more. So kind of taking a look now at the page itself. You can see the instructions for the page and then also instructions directly on the text block. So now um, locking of instructions is fine, writing text is fine. And so when we have somebody who might not be very comfortable editing things online, they need to um, update their text block, add a reflection to it, they go into the edit mode and might accidentally change the size of it or move it around and might get really frustrated because, oh my gosh, the layout changed. And what you can already do, of course, is prevent that um, a, a block gets deleted accidentally. Um, so that is in the page settings. That has been a feature already for a few releases now under advanced. It used to be called lock blocks, but we've changed it to call it prevent removing of blocks because that really is more what, what it's to do, not locking the blocks in place. And um, so now we would still have the problem that the layout of the page can be changed when we really want people to focus on their reflection. And so, um, the new feature in Mahara 20.10 is that you can edit a text block directly on the page itself without needing to go into edit mode. And so all you need is the 
uh, details mode turned on, which is good to turn on anyway, because then you can see comments and you can see the metadata of other blogs. So if you do create a portfolio for assessment purposes, that might already be something that you have turned on anyway. And then you see those um, black bars. So if I turn it off, we have our regular page, um, very pristine and structured. And when you turn it on, we can see more of the um, metadata. And in terms of the text block, we have that quick edit option available, which brings out the configuration screen. And then if I were in the edit mode, I can add my uh, content to it. And I can change tags, I can set it to retractable, I can change the block title, add images, I can do the regular things that I can do on a text block. But the only thing I cannot do is change its location and its size. So if you have a template portfolio um, where you do want people to focus on adding their content and not really fiddling with the layout, then that might be a good option for you to use, especially when they just want to make quick edits. And so this feature is currently only available on uh, text blocks because we want to see how it is being accepted uh, by others before we um, take a look at whether other blocks could also get this option, um, whether it would make sense there. So already now we've seen a number of new features, namely the lock, um, the, the quick editing, the instructions for text blocks, um, and also the template functionality. With the templates, of course, you can expand that. So for example, that you cannot, or that the delete button is removed so that you can still move blocks around, but not um, all the time. Um, or that maybe in future, some other actions are being handled by that template. And you can create templates on any level in Mahara. It doesn't just have to be the institution level. So it's a very flexible um, functionality. Now here on this page, you are seeing that I have uh, the sign off block. And if I go to another page, I also allowed it to be verified. And so this functionality has been in Mahara since, um, or already since um, 18.10, so it's two years old. Um, but what you still have to do is kind of go through every single page in order to see, has this page been signed off or has it been verified? And that, of course, is quite cumbersome if you have a large portfolio or if you have even just have a 10 page portfolio. And so what of one of our clients had said um, when they wanted this functionality is ideally we also want to have a dashboard going with it so that we can see how many sign-offs do I already have on my portfolio and how many verifications are still needed. And that is now where the portfolio completion page comes in. That shows us the progress through our portfolio. So it sits at the start of a portfolio and gives you that overall percentage view over all the sign-offs and all the verifications. Then you can click the links to be taken directly to the portfolio pages. And then you can see the sign-off and verifications. And you can actually also do the sign-offs and verifications directly from this page, seeing how then this progress bar changes. And so this is really, really handy um, to see if anything um, or what needs still sign of and verification. And here, so for the bottom, you can see number three, verification cannot yet be made. In this case, the author cannot make it anyway. But even if I were an assessor, I would not be able to take it because the sign off is still required. And so this feature in future could also come with a report um, that an institution admin sees, well, how many sign-offs and verifications are there already on portfolios? Um, how much is still needed? Um, there could be a block on the dashboard for a 
uh, for a tutor or lecturer to see all the pages that they need to verify or all the portfolios that are still outstanding or that they can already verify. So lots of great potential for the future, but this one, what we've already been able to implement is um, pretty awesome because it is another one of those visual cues that helps us um, see where we are at and um, where we might need to go and have more information than available in order to quickly go through our portfolio. Those were and all the changes that I wanted to show you in Mahara. Um, but we do have a number of changes elsewhere. And so continuing with our assessment, but also moving into integration, I'd like to show you that we now have a Moodle Mahara assignment submission plugin available that does not require MNET but works with LTI and web services. And so what the student can do as they are used to, if you have a Moodle instance um, set up or an assignment can be set up and like the MNET plugin, uh, you can use your grading rubric or a marking workflow and then select a submission. And your pages and collections are displayed and if you're not, you don't even need to go into Mahara in order to select them. So right now I can select one of my portfolios and they are being submitted into Moodle. And depending on the settings um, for the activity, the portfolio is locked or is, it is not locked and it can also be archived. So that is a functionality that is currently not available in the MNET uh, version of the plugin. And therefore you do get a bit more by when moving to the LTI and web services option. And so for Moodle, we did create a plugin um, because the stock standard LTI functionality doesn't really give you a lot of flexibility on how to grade the portfolio because all you can do is um, give it a number grade and that's it. Um, but you can't use a rubric. You would have to do that very separately um, in the LMS. And that's why we looked into, well, how can we more tightly um, integrate Moodle and Mahara for assignment purposes? Because a lot of organizations that use Mahara also have Moodle. So creating a plugin um, to make their work easier um, was definitely a good choice. Now, if you're taking a look at what that looks like on the instructor perspective, um, when they set up the activity in Moodle, all they have to do is kind of set, set up the assignment. And when the plugin has been installed, um, the submission type Mahara is visible. And then the URL for the site, the OAuth key and the secret, um, those are LTI requirements can be added. Um, there is also the option to um, preset that for all the courses, so of all the activities, so that an instructor doesn't have to always ask as an administrator about those details. And then you can decide on the locking of the portfolios, um, whether to keep it locked entirely forever, um, unlock after grading and also archive. And the archive like archiving portfolios that have been submitted to groups in Mahara is happening on the Mahara site itself. And then um, once the submissions have been made by the students, I can as um, instructor can go into the portfolio and then view the portfolio and perform my grading with my regular methods of using the rubric or any of the other advanced grading methods if I like. So that plugin is available. Um, you cannot yet find it um, in the Moodle plugin database. That is still something that um, I'm working on with our Moodle team to get it in there, but it is already available for you to work with and uh, give it a go. 
So integration, further integrations that are possible with learning management systems is moving off custom profile fields into Mahara. So with LTI, um, typically you get a first name, last name and email address that is pushed into Mahara. Uh, but sometimes you might actually want to add more details. And so it is now easier possible to send custom profile fields into Mahara and make them available um, through the web services. So that you could, for example, send through departmental information um, and also any um, dates or and that's another nice feature that we have that I'm that I haven't shown you yet uh, is the course completions. So if you work with Moodle or Totara, you can now also send those through. They come through in a block in Mahara and are displayed and updated automatically based on the times um, that you have going and uh, or the times that you've selected. So you can select a particular time frame for which you want to show course completions and then also have them um, have the number of hours calculated. And all of that can be achieved through the power of web services. And thanks for letting us know, John, that um, LTI is working really well for you. Um, that is definitely good to hear because it is the protocol that we are using to make further integration changes and um, adjustments rather than focusing on MNET. Because with LTI, we do have the possibility not just to support one or two learning management systems, but a whole range. So pretty much any that supports the LTI standard that we are currently on. Now, I did mention that we did not only make changes to Mahara itself, but had integrations. And one other change that you might be interested, especially when you are on the road, is that we have updated our mobile app. Um, over the past five years, we've had Mahara mobile available and, that, and before that already portfolio app. And, um, the apps do not replace the website, um, but instead they are complementary. Because in some cases you might be in a situation where you can't use the internet. Um, and so it should still be possible for you to um, create a portfolio or upload evidence or, or um, organize evidence and start on the portfolio process, or maybe even already um, write a journal entry. And Mahara Mobile supports you with those things. Um, it allows you to um, take a photo, video, audio, record audio, um, or upload a file and create a journal entry. And then prepare all of those for upload. So add tags, descriptions, and the like. And then once you're back on Wi-Fi or mobile data, it can uh, add all of that into your portfolio area. So it is being cute. And um, unfortunately, the technology that we were using was not fully supported by one of the platforms anymore. And therefore, we, we needed to decide whether to recheck everything there or start from scratch. And so we decided to develop this app in React Native. And as you can see, it also cr uh, received a new theme so that it uh, goes with our brand. And it is now available again in our Android and also the iOS store for you to give it a go and um, work with it, have students install it. Because it's different technology, you will need to install it separately um, rather than being able to update it automatically. And one last um, thing that is um, of interest to all of you who are more on the technical level and do want to install their own Mahara instance on your own computers or uh, servers is that Mahara now supports Docker and we have an official Docker image 
that can be used for development and testing purposes and also as basis to set up your own Mahara in a Docker instance. And so Docker is um, like a virtual machine so, and it's often part of containerization. So if we go with that metaphor, you kind of put a container onto the web server or onto your computer, it is self-contained. Um, you don't need to make any changes in, um, on your computer in order to run Mahara. So if your computer, for example, still had PHP 7.2, but um, you want to try Mahara with PHP 7.4, then you don't have to change the PHP version on your computer but you just do that in that container um, and therefore keep everything very nice uh, separated and can give Mahara a go. So if you already have a Docker infrastructure set up, you're good to go to use Mahara with Docker and um, therefore have an easier way of installing it and also of um, support, uh, playing around with it and then eventually also putting it onto production. So besides those features that I've um, shown you now and uh, talked about, there are many more and um, some of them are really more on the technical level. There are some other small new improvements that I haven't shown you, though there is one that is actually quite important to look at. Um, and so please do feel free to check them out. So over the last releases, um, when you had a collection and you wanted to select text, that didn't quite work and you had uh, you were taken to the next page. Um, that was a conflict between our um, mobile browsing and um, how the desktop behaved. And so we fixed this up so that you can now be on a collection and also highlight text without being taken to the next page. So sometimes it is kind of feels like more those small things, small, small changes that we've made that can have a huge impact. And so, of course, all of these changes are documented in the Mahara manual, as usual, um, which you can access via manual.mahara.org. And there is the Mahara 20.10 manual, which also has a separate section on the new features. And again, there we have mainly the highlights. Um, there is also a very short video of um, slightly under five minutes talking about the features that I've been discussing today. And then of course the larger exp or longer explanations and step-by-step -step guides are available in the actual manual sections. Now as usual, you're very welcome to download Mahara and install it if you have a a test server or development server or just want to do it on your own computer and then upgrade an existing site to Mahara 20.10. Now with this release uh, Mahara 19.04 is uh, went out of support so that means that we are not providing security updates anymore for it and so we do encourage everybody who's still on an older version of Mahara to upgrade to 20.10 in order to stay supported. And then if you have any questions, please do feel free to get in touch with me and um, also let us know how you're going with Mahara 2010, which features you like in particular um, and um, yeah, give us feedback and um, tell us where you might want to take those features. What I'd also like to remind you is that while all of these features are natively only accessible in Mahara 20.10 and onwards, if you do particularly like one but you do not have the possibility to upgrade just yet, um, please, you can still get in touch with us because oftentimes it is possible to backport those features to your instance of Mahara um, or to your version of Mahara. And so that is something that we can quickly check and then let you know the possibilities there.